no returning to what was done earlier what we have let me separate it here what we had when we reach this point let's consider from this point onward all right let's do it again but this time using a popular method they call cross multiplying although remember you have to be very careful when it comes to the cross multiplying thing right? right let me just get rid of this part of the working and restart from here here remember what we did we are d equals square root of 4h over 5 d equal d squared equal 4h over 5 r squared and d squared equal 4h over 5 now earlier what we did was this d squared equal 4h divided by 5 and then we multiply by 5 multiply by 5 let's do it a different way the popular cross multiplying oh, over 5 now what we can do is put the d squared over 1 so we have a fraction equal another fraction if you say 1 by 4h d squared by 5 what you end up with is 5 d squared equal 4 h 4 h times 1 so you have 5 d squared equals 4 h all right you end up with 5 d squared equal 4 h as before because remember what we did before is multiply by 5, 5 cancel 5, and you have 4h, then this by 5, 5d squared. So it works with the cross multiply or with the multiplying both sides by 5. The other thing now, what we did here was to say the square root and the square cancel each other leaving the 4h over 5 untouched let me explain that part a bit suppose you had square root of 3 squared you're going to find that the square root and the square root cancel each other leaving the 3 untouched because you know that 3 squared is 9 so you're finding the square root of 9 what's the square root of 9? tree so the tree is left untouched all right so that's what happened similar thing as this so that's a little explanation and an alternative way to work this part out and the explanation as to why the square root and the square is left untouched using this illustration here. Alright, so next time